ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. We're one match away from determining the last player of the Redemption Tournament that will be joining us at the Season 2 Legendary Series Land Finals. I'm TJ, joined, of course, with Brodan. And uh, it's been a long week for us, but we're really excited, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So the final is going to be between Tom60229 and Oskaka, who we just saw uh, take his semifinal match. We could take a look at what happened throughout the day. Call the Tom60229, Lemmy Jux, Tuwet, Oskaka, and Amaz. They all started out happy and excited to make it to the Legendary Series, but Tom and Oskaka are the only two that remain. That's right. Uh, Oskaka, definitely the one happy to win over Lemmy Jux, partially because his, pro his previous performance was, you know, not representative of his actual skill. It was mm -hmm. pretty bad. <laughs> Zero yeah. and six in the last time was not reflective of how Oskaka normally does in these type of events. Now he's in the finals. Now he has one chance to get to the land in California. Mm -hmm. And it'd mean a lot because I know that uh, Oskaka, you know, in the process of trying to continue to establish himself amongst the Western scene. Tom, in the meantime, he just wants to play some Hearthstone competitively, win some money, and be the best player he can be. And he's doing a pretty good job of it so far. I peg this one as uh, kind of like leaning over towards Tom's favor because he has the handlock over the zoo. They have pretty much yep. the same exact lineup otherwise with a few card car choices that differ. Mm -hmm. Well, how about you guys let us know what you think. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at ESL Hearthstone. Uh, you can use the hashtag HLS. Uh, tell us your predictions, who you think you're going to win, who you think is going to win. Uh, who are you rooting for to make it to that land finals? Yeah. And even after that, who are you rooting for to win the whole thing? Join in on those conversations. Sure. And you can uh, tweet at AzumoQT on Twitter. Tell him how cute he actually is. Just so adorable in that deep blood red shirt. Funny thing is, I actually thought it was orange for a long time until someone told me that it really? was red. Yeah. It's pretty red, man. Mm. It is. Mm. That you're making it even... I'm just, like, just like checking you out a lot, a lot right now. Thanks. I've been working out. So is is Garrosh orange as well to you, or is that red? <sighs> it's brown. Is Malfurion red or orange to you? He's purple. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is the background of the the Hearthstone like logo like what is this what is this color to you? This little palette of textures is that red or orange? It's a uh, mauve. <laughs> Your mauve. <laughs> yep, that's my mood right now. <laughs> is that even how mauve. you say the color name? I thought it was like it's mauve. mauve. <laughs> yeah. Like the like the name. The first time I thought that it was like a name in the fifties. In French, it's mauve. Oh, in French. You know French? <laughs> I'd like to think I do. Oh. What's cheesecake in French? Not Oskaka. Le cheesecake. Le cheesecake. XD. Le cake fromage. <laughs> le caca fromage. Gâteau is cake in French. Is it? So, so le gâteau fromage. Yes. <laughs> Here at the Legendary Series, we are French. <laughs> <laughs> le XD. <laughs> Epic meme. All right, well, we, uh, now that we got past the pre-match successfully <laughs> without contributing anything worthwhile to this broadcast, it's like our 30th hour of broadcasting, guys, throughout the week, so uh, bear with us as we're, we're having fun here and enjoying ourselves. Because <clears throat> if you can't laugh, then what's the point? It's Hearthstone. It's whimsical. And if you don't like fun, leave. But if you do like fun, stay. Mm -hmm. In the process, we're going to enjoy these games. We have five games maximum, three minimum, and we're going to start off with Wild Growth up against, uh, well, it looks like a Fiery War Axe. And both players are pretty well aware of what uh, the other player is uh, bringing to the table at this stage. Yep. Now, if your opponent doesn't attack with the Fiery War Axe, do you just take it immediately, or do you wait for that death bite because it's so soul-crushing to make it misfire and uh, have that death rattle trigger prematurely? Yeah, I think it depends on the hand, but I do agree with you that taking out the death bite when you know that the Grim Patron Warrior is planning something um, dastardly. Then, That's a great word. Yeah. 
then <clears throat> it's it's better to save it for the more opportune moment. Uh, but I mean, drawing two cards and taking out a fireworks is is okay. But in this matchup, I do like uh, making sure yeah. you take it off at two time. I think silencing the accolades also great. It's like another way you can gain card advantage by you know, denying him the yeah. cards. Ironically enough, it doesn't because silencing the acolyte means he attacks with it the fiery war axe and uh, draws cards with battle rage. Yeah, but you know, can't always assume that that's going to happen. It's similar in effect to saying you know. Um, a lot of Control Warrior players or Grim Page and Warrior Mirrors mm. will say that executing the <clears throat> Acolyte of Pain is a good choice. I wonder if Oskaka could play a little too fast because he just drew Innervate Wrath. And he, like, that's like the exact two card combination where it's like maybe you shouldn't end the turn too early because now his Acolyte will be able to draw multiple cards mm -hmm. because of it. So that could have been something that Oskaka. Definitely regrets. But now that he's passed it, he can utilize his Innervate appropriately. Like, if he picks up Dr. Boom in the next card, yeah. maybe it works out okay. Because it turns out Dr. Boom would be really hard to deal with right now. He also has Ancient of Lore, which is pretty good. And he Ancient curves out really nicely. Like, he's got a nice... Uh, he can, like, Innervate Ancient of Lore right. into, like, Sylvanas, or even has flexibility with Shade of Naxxramas and Wrath. So, uh, he's, he's definitely... Not too sad about his position in the game. But uh, this is a tough matchup for Druid. It's They can feel like they're in a good position, and all of a sudden, uh, Grim Patient Warrior, just the nature of the deck, he can turn games around really quickly. Must start up a lot of damage in a single turn. As we've seen. Yeah, just a couple of minutes ago, honestly. It was fine. It was looking pretty good, and then all of a sudden just started flipping what the switch. No. But to be fair, I felt like Limitrix gave a lot of time for Oskaka to draw those cards as the patient warrior. And that's, that's the important thing. You want to starve the warrior. Even more than just outpacing them, you want to starve them. This is <clears throat> pretty effective to start building up the Frothing Berserker. But um, what it starts doing, too, is it starts making sure that you can leverage the board a little bit. Mm -hmm. You had the Frothing Berserker to keep pushing in damage. Uh, you have the weapon to start controlling the state of the board. And you have Thorson. Uh, with Battle Rage, and that's going to be a really nice combo in the coming turns to draw a lot of cards. Yep. Well, Swipe is a pretty effective way to deal with this, but if he does that, he's not doing anything else this turn. Everything else doesn't feel that great. If he throws Sylvanas down, it just gets traded into... Um, if he yeah. Keeper silences it, then hmm. uh, he runs into the same situation as before, where he allows him to still kill it, the uh, Keeper of the yeah. Grove, but get, get Battle Rage. Rage. Battle Rage, yeah. So, um, he can... Piloted Shredder? But that doesn't seem great either. <clears throat> Druid of the Claw does sort of force some type of hmm. um, extra spell, like Whirlwind or even a weapon hit and Frothing Berserker to be traded in in order to deal with it. Mm, I feel like if you're going to Druid of the Claw, you might as well charge it. Like, charge the 5 4 so they guaranteed kill it. But, like, that's only if you want to save Swipe, because Swipe might be better removal than, you know, like Wrath, for example. Yeah. But in this scenario, I, I, I pretty much agree. I think you just got to take out that Frothing Berserker, and you got to put something on the board, and that's the best way to do it. Emperor Thorsan, not the best Emperor Thorsan, especially since it's reducing Dread Corsair, which mm -hmm. with Despite would already cost zero. Battle Rage, like you mentioned, is a great card to reduce. Allows you to fit in a Battle Rage after a big combo a little bit sooner than you normally would. Right. Hmm. Seven mana. Seven mana doesn't give you too many options here. Swipe and Hero Power cost six. Savage Roar gives you the ability to play the Pilot Shredder, but you're not really doing too much. Traded in the keeper. Trades it in. Okay. So he trades in, so that way it's not vulnerable also to the combo of patron, mm -hmm. which happens to be with the card he's drawn. This is actually a pretty sick hand from Tom. Yeah. He's got multiple ways to develop multiple grim patrons, and then he's got battle rage to refill his hand with all the injured patrons that are on the board. So you, you just like ditch the second charge of Fire War Axe and then start attacking with Death Spite, or do you go for, uh... Oh, he's going for the combo now. Okay. Drawing a lot of cards is excellent anyways. His hand was feeling a little low. 
Yeah, three cards is pretty good. The, the Grim Patron is just so problematic for Drew to deal with in this scenario, too, because of the, the Dread Corsair. Yeah, especially since he's seen one Keeper and a Wrath already. Those are usually two of the best ways that you deal with it. You Keeper, one of the two health Grim Patrons. You Wrath, one of the three health. Sure. Maybe Hero Power down a third that might be straggling around at one health. Although, Sylvanas what? does introduce a really complicated board state for the war to deal with. Yeah. They can't actually deal with uh, the, the five health and the five attack that easily uh, because it doesn't copy the, the Grim Patron. But more importantly, you can't trade everything down and then just start comboing again. You have to give up something. Hmm. The alternative to Sylvanas is a Savage Roar play with the Druid of the Claw. Yeah. And you clear the board. He also wants to sort of factor in what possible plays there are next turn. No also true. If he doesn't deal with Grim Patrons. And I think the best way to, to address that is to play Sylvanas. So that makes oh boy. Tom have to think a little bit more about what he wants to do here. To make sure that he plays around Sylvanas the best that in the best possible way. Got some major damage coming in, uh, possibility in the following turns too. But he did lose one of those Frothing Berserkers. What now? I think you don't want to give up a Grim Patron though. It's like definitely one of the worst things you can do because the Grim Patron might re make you refuse to lose, or wait, might it basically might allow you to never win board again. You can flood the board this turn and deal with the Sylvanas what and make sure you develop Despite to set up for like Warsong Commander Grim Patron next turn without oh, having sure. to worry about it. You mean like let try and make him steal the Gnomish or the Ar Armor Smith or something like that? Yeah, well I mean Armor Smith and Acolyte of Pain. Acolyte of Pain is not the best to give a Druid to steal but... Yeah, that's also fair. But that way you can fit in Despite this turn because I think Despite is like the must. It's true. Um, so probably Armor Smith, Acolyte of Pain, yeah. I don't know, he armors up instead. Okay. He values the... He's going aggressive. Yeah. He has a comp, he has War Song, which allows him to be really aggressive with a Whirlwind anyways. So he's calculating how much damage he can enact, assuming his opponent doesn't have the exact response. Now, there is an interesting way that you can activate the Sylvanas. You can use the Big Game Hunter on your own Sylvanas after you Savage Roar. So if you Savage Roar down the Dread Corsair, have the... Uh, Shay of Nax Ram is attack into the Armor Smith, and then the the Sylvanas attacks into the three two, and then steal the Grand Pentry by big game huntering your own Sylvanas. It would require you to reveal your shade, which you're not the happiest about. But uh, the benefits of doing so are really high. You and, live, <laughs> and you get to uh, develop the Pilot Shredder as well. So that's ten mana available. That's a creative play. <clears throat> Creative play come from a creative mind. No, oh, thanks, TJ. I would like to take credit, like, oh, that's the first time I've ever seen it, but I saw it being done by, I believe, Sixo. Uh, or was it RDU? Or maybe they were playing each other, and that happened. What? The alternative would be to uh, play Ancient of Lore and just draw cards, but mm. I still think this play is really good. And it looks like that's exactly what he's going to go for. Sort of has to go a little bit quick. Uh, or not. Not All attacking right. in the armor smith was a pretty dead giveaway. I like yeah. your play better. Uh, it's it's just cute, to be honest. The Sylvanas might be able to go even further and um, kill. But the thing is, what this does is it gives your ability to clear the board now. It clears the now you can clear the board uh, with the death bite swing. But maybe that's what Oskaka wants. What yeah. No. Because now he can't develop anything. He'll uh, attack the Armorsmith into the Sylvanas, attack the Despite into the Ancient of Lore, and then Gnomish and Venner? Okay. Speak to me. Creative way to get draws out of the yeah, Acolyte of Pain. He needs something a little bit more. Like, right now his hand's still just a little bit too weak. That's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Also pretty good. 
Yeah. Next it turn, he can use like all those combos. cards. So if he has a creature that isn't a taunt that he can throw Cool Taskmaster, or sorry, Unstable Ghoul into next turn, he would spawn two patrons from, from Grim Patron. That would be eight damage, plus two more patrons for six more damage. So he'd be able to do 14 damage total. Well, I want to say that this is potentially lethal here just because of the craziness that might ensue with a lot of Grim Patrons. But, you know, I haven't counted yet. No, I don't think it is. Okay, so you have eight damage to the Patron. Two, copy. Yeah. He, that would be 14, 15, 16, 17 damage total with exactly what's on board. Because, of course, he'll have four Grim Patrons. It might depend on if he can kill the... What comes out of the pilot of Shredder, potentially? But I still don't think it'd be enough. Unless there's a Haunted Creeper. No, yeah. Yeah. No, even if there's a Haunted Creeper, yeah, yeah, best just go one for one on the board. Yeah. So but still a lot of pressure. He's pretty short, but Muskaka looks like he's dead. He did. No, oh, it's got combo. That's not enough. Because he'd have to attack into one of these. Right. It would still leave one on the board with two damage. You take at least three. And that's it. And Tom gets out to a lead. Takes a 1-0 lead in the finals. Tanya, man. I think Tom 6 2 is coming to, to Burbank. Uh, just one of those things where I saw his play today. Uh, I saw how sharp he is on the ball. Mm -hmm. He's playing at really odd time zones, too. He started off the day, and it's like 3, 4 a.m. over there. And now it's starting to finally get it to like normal hours, like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Yeah. But he's playing really well. He's bought great decks, and he's not really making mistakes across the board. I think this guy is going to be coming to Burbank. Mm -hmm. um, Oskaka might have missed an opportunity there to really seize an opportunity to control the board. I can understand why he wanted to develop uh, the Ancient of Lore, though, because that's like a really important thing to not die to a Falling Berserker combo. Yeah. Because um, the thing about that big game hunter play that we talk about is that he could have also just died mm -hmm. if his opponent had um, any opportunity to develop a Falling with a War Song. That's true. That's very true. <clears throat> but Okaska, oh, Os Oskaka mm -hmm. uh, did find himself in this exact same position in the first series of the day, uh, or in his first series of the day, where he f fell down in the first game and then went three in a row. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's no stranger to, to falling behind like this. So don't count him out yet, but I do agree that Tom is playing exceptionally well today. And I've learned to never doubt that itch in Frodan's knee that tells him something's about to happen. That H? That itch? Oh, itch. It's like that's an, that's an ache, <laughs> TJ. I know you, you've been studying you a lot really of foreign... You really... I know you've been studying a, a lot of foreign languages, <laughs> TJ. <laughs> dipping into the Swedes, you know, messing around with the French. And Icelandic folk. That's right. You've been gallivanting out in Europe and learning their ways and cultures and language. But an American, when it comes to speaking American, you can't beat me. Gotcha. Le Noted. Fromage. <laughs> that sounds way more badass if Oskaka changed it to that, the French way to say it wouldn't, cheesecake. It wouldn't fit on our overlay, though. So he'd be out of luck. That's the coolest part about it. Yeah, like Modern Leopard became Modern L. So cool. That is cool, but I don't think you realize how cool that is, TJ, because you don't watch anime. Druid versus Druid is going to be a pretty quick one. I feel like Tom and Noskaka might be playing this systematically out, but shouldn't be too discouraging here. Uh, if either player loses, it's just kind of what happens. <clears throat> Tom winning this means that he has three chances with Handlock to win. Well, Skaka yeah. winning this means he sends it over to, uh, well, I guess his Handlock and Druid, or sorry, his, his Handlock and Warrior versus the Handlock and Druid for Tom, yeah. which leans towards the player that can win Handlock versus Handlock again. Yeah. Well, Tom's back. He was taking a quick restroom break. He's been playing for a while today, so. Uh, and of course, you mentioned Weird Hours. Weird Hours force you to go to the restroom more. Druid versus Druid. And uh, Thomas is two wins away from securing his spot in the Legendary Series Land Finals in June. Yep, he's one step closer. The player that wins this will join the likes of Kalento, Life Coach, 
Cobby, Raynad, Trump, Trump Lead Paint, and Spider Raj, or Roger from Team Spider Way Spider Raj. Spider Raj. Yeah, uh, Raj. Roger did played really well yesterday, and I think he's about to get joined by his Taiwanese teammate. Now, of course, I could be wrong. I, I'd be happy to. Every time I met Oskaka, he's been very pleasant. In fact, the first time I met Oskaka, I thought he was Colento by accident. Because he was wearing a hoodie and uh, his hair covered his eyes a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, "Oh, hey, Col Coletto, right?" And then he's like, "No, I'm a little cock. I was like, <laughs> "Oh man, that's really awkward." Yeah. Um, but uh, it turns out they're both really good Hearthstone players. It didn't matter who it was. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be weird if like your your vision was just based off of like have you seen the movie Shallow Hal? Where he uh, sees people commercials for it. He sees people based on their inner beauty right, instead of like their, their outer, outer beauty. beauty. What if you saw people based off their Hearthstone skill? So like everybody that had w the best Hearthstone players in the world all look exactly the same to you, and the worst Hearthstone players in the world just were the ugliest beings you could possibly imagine. Well, I would hate to look in a mirror then. <laughs> TJ, I would have trouble looking at myself every single day. Is that what you want to hear? Shallow Dan. That's what the movie would be called. Starring Jack Black and Dan. I want Tom60229 to be playing me in the movie, please. Okay. <laughs> I refuse to actually play myself. It's not hard. Use, use a stand-in. Tom, you just, but you have to shoot him from the side profile, because that's where he looks like me. Okay. Noted, we'll keep in mind. Well, we are underway with this game number two. It's really good tempo. Innervate into coin pilot shredder. Double shredders is really difficult to swing unless you get your own innervate. Mm -hmm. How do you retaliate? Guess you could wait till turns five to go for the Dr. Boom. That might be your best way to, to fight back. His turn four is weak if he doesn't draw into anything. And. Yeah. And Tom has. Shade, Pilot Shredder, Sludge Belcher into the coin, into the Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. And that's got, uh, you know, the fact that Oskaka's got the Dr. Boom here uh, in his hand, and he's got a follow-up to his opponent's Dr. Boom with Big Game Hunter is pretty big. Yeah. But how does he address what's on the board right now? I don't know. He, he might be tempted to play Big Game Hunter. Just because he can't fall too far behind on the board. Yeah, that's a death sentence. If you fall too far behind on the board in a druid mirror, that's why you see a lot of druids. They actually, if they don't have a turn three play, they'll throw out BGH all willy-nilly. Yeah. Plus, we haven't seen too much of the decks to know whether or not they're, he's playing two big game hunters like a few people were choosing or just one big game hunter. Yeah. And... Some people might scoff at the idea. What are you going to do with two big game hunters? Well, one's to shoot Dr. Boom, and uh, the other's to shoot your own Sylvanas, which has this average run. Yeah. Like, oh, There's really well against that actually what happens to you. All right. He, makes it, he wants to make sure that he saves coin for Dr. Boom. At least I think so. But coin sludge belcher seems pretty strong right here. Yeah, Coin Stellar's Butcher is really powerful, considering that your opponent would have to deal with Pilot Shredder through Wrath. And if he has Wrath, hmm, I don't know. It's still, like, really good to get that Coin Dr. Boom play. But now this is finally time for the revenge of Le Gata Fremaz. <laughs> Starting to bring it back. I can't say that in my normal voice. I have to always go really deep. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you. Gato. Fromage. <laughs> and some people who are familiar Sistic with Spanish are like, Cheese Cat? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's a great idea for a YouTube video. <laughs> I'll get 100,000 views right now. Let's do that. Meanwhile, every company that wants to advertise on YouTube is struggling. It's like, <laughs> how do we reach our viewers? It's like, guys, the answer is not that hard. Just put a cat in it. With cheese. <laughs> With cheese. 
And preferably cake. That'd be nice, too. Mm -hmm. Innervate Dr. Boom. Uh, Alskaka gave some thought about it, and I like that he's weighing the pros and cons of it. But in the end, this is definitely the best option. And now, Tom has to deal with the repercussions of it. Yeah. Who's ahead here, DJ, do you think? Is, like, if you can play Dr. Boom and say like you minimize the, the impacts of the Boom bot that doesn't do well, are you coming out ahead? Or is it the 7-7 seven still too overpowering? Hmm. Well, if he finds a way to deal with it, the damage here is really uh, awkward just because he's got uh, 12 damage only spread across three targets. Wow. It's just like, I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> you deal with it. Well, he's put him at 11 health. So even if like the board right. gets in a really weird state, all he has to do is draw on a combo sometime in the next like <clears throat> five turns. Well, what's funny is his opponent has Lotheb too, and and also can sort of like he can attack Big Game Hunter into the Pilot Shredder, see what happens, evaluate the Boom Bots, trade, and then drop Lotheb himself. Hmm. If it's a really bad scenario, he can drop Lotheb. If it's in like where he might die, if it's like. He cleaned up a lot, and it turns out Boombot RNG loves him. He can drop Paris and Jones instead. And he has the force of nature and the innervate. And I've seen weird stuff where it's like, well, the game detects that you have innervate and force of nature. Oh, wait, he draws Savage Roar. Oh, it's game over. Mm -hmm. It's one of those conspiracy theories that you love to throw out there. The law of soul fire. I mean, I, I personally don't have any evidence of it, but it just feels like there's weighted RNG in places. It just, it makes, it, ma it justifies how I lose so much easier, TJ. I have solid evidence that proves that it's a 9 out of 10 <laughs> chance. Yeah. So this is obviously not a good outcome. The Boombot hit the face. So he just says, I play Lotheb, you deal with it. And Drew of the Claw would be game, but he doesn't have it. He can't coin Dr. Boom, and actually coin Dr. Boom is not helpful at all. In fact, looking like a low thread, uh, not, not low thread, um, a Sludge Belcher play to answer the low thread. And if he plays Sludge Belcher, then does he survive? Ooh. Mistress of Pain. Hot. <laughs> You're into that. Slightly. Well, Mr. Chapin doesn't skip leg day, that's for sure. I have a confession to make to EJ. I've been skipping leg day a lot. I tried doing a squat the other day and it was embarrassing. That should be game, I believe. Uh, he's got does a lot of damage. Does the damage line up? No. If he throws Lothab into the Sludge Belcher, Force of Nature, he's putting um, 12 damage into phase. He is one mana off from being able to oh, okay. innervate out the wrath. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't have enough to. Or um, swipe. Are you sure? Wait. It depends on where this boom bot goes. Couldn't he just uh, wrath innervate force of nature? Hmm, I wonder. Yeah, yeah. So he. Ra and, yeah. Force of nature, wrath for three, and then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Attacks. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe I counted wrong, but I thought this was lethal. No, I was looking at swipe as lethal. Oh, okay. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah, this should line up exactly. Actually, does it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. The exact lethal. Exact lethal. Because uh, you count wrath as equivalent of damage dealt to the face. Yeah, yeah. The easy way to do it is to count taunt health as part of the actual total health and then see if any removal can mm -hmm. start doing it. Well spotted. Mm -hmm. But he's going to tie up the series one to one, takes the Druid Mirror matchup. This is the second time in a row that Oskak has taken the Druid Mirror matchup. Yeah, and it's a really important one because now instead of, well, can I 3 0 handlock? It's, uh, you know, can I win this handlock mirror? Yeah. It's going to be coming down, maybe not necessarily next game, it, maybe it is, but somewhere down the line, before the series ends, it has to be handlock versus handlock, I mm -hmm. think. Unless both players refuse to, like, are choosing to be stubborn. If Kaka says, I know you're going to play handlock, but I'm going to switch to Patron Mori anyways, or on the opposite end, if your opponent's playing Druid and you know he's he wants to face off against Patron Warrior. Yeah. Uh, both are not preferable on either ends. Yeah. All right. Well, Skaka looks like he's taking a slight restroom break, so it's going to be a uh, just a couple minutes before we jump into uh, the next match. Mm -hmm.
When we were on the last break, I tried to look up Yu-Gi-Oh facts to one-up you. Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh facts. And I really. was unsuccessful. Yeah, possibly because you know, I've, I know a lot about Yu-Gi-Oh. I know. Yeah. You know a lot about a lot of things. I, well, that's why. Yeah. That's why when uh, I research things, I try and go for the obscure. I try and go for the things that I know uh, that you're not going to know anything about. Okay. Like Swedish cheesecake. Like Swedish cheesecake. Or just Icelandic or culture. Or Icelandic culture. Yeah. Gotcha. I looked up popular Icelandic food dishes. We're talking about Icelandic culture because of Kaldi, who participated earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting, actually. Very socially progressive country. Everybody there is pretty well educated. They care about things outside of Iceland as well. Mm -hmm. It's very refreshing. I'm going to move to Iceland. <laughs> It's settled. But are you sure? You, uh, t you Apparently, you can't spank your children in Iceland. No. That's what you told me. No, I also looked up spanking laws for children. In Canada, you're allowed to spank your children only if they're between the ages of 2 and 12, mm -hmm. and you can only use your hand. No objects or feet or your head if you can manage Spank that. Spanking with the feet is not spanking anymore. That's, <laughs> that's a Friday night. I, I'm, pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure spanking refers to the noise and not the actual motion. <laughs> oh, okay. So if you can make your feet make the spank noise. You are a very talented person, TJ. <laughs> Thank you. That's what she said. <laughs> There's, no way to <laughs> There's no way to transition off of that. <laughs> it's a handlock versus handlock. I've stumped oh, the master gonna, of transition. They're going to they're gonna spank each other <laughs> with their hand locks. Oh. The master of uh, transition strikes again. I just forgot that Oskaka is not playing hand lock. He's actually playing zoo. Still funny. Still funny. It's actually a pretty aggressive zoo, too. Zoo, zoo that runs double soul fire, <laughs> double dark bomb. Aggressive like my spanks. That's the sound of the, the horse <laughs> being beaten again. <laughs> Let it go, TJ. Let it go. The the zoo uh, is really powerful and explosive with some of the direct damage. I think the things that will really push over the top are soul fires, power overwhelmings, maybe even the dark bombs, but you still don't keep them. You still keep things that are board-centric. Lepernome you keep. Uh, everything else you toss. In the meantime, Tom knows that this is an aggressive deck. Keep them mortal coils. Mm -hmm. Would you keep a mountain giant? Probably not. It's really slow. He is. He is um not on the coin, so it would curve out nicely. Mm -hmm. Like he'd be able to mortal coil like one drop, then tap the next turn, tap the next right. turn into mountain giant. Mm -hmm. Arcane golem. So this is very reminiscent of the Chalky version. Yeah, I think it's almost identical. Almost identical. Yeah. Chalky's was golden though, so. It felt more powerful. Oh. Is the Leprenum holding a shield? I didn't notice that in the past. That's pretty cool. It's a buckler. Yeah. Not a shield. A buckler is a shield. It's a form of defense. But it's it's a little bit weird because uh, his head is so big and disproportionate to the body. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he has a coin available to him for three mana this turn. So you can play Imp Gang Boss. And then next turn you're Voidwalker tapping. And then turn four you have Defender of Argus. If you play Voidwalker, you float a mana. You can coin out the Defender of Argus the following turn, but your board is identically strong to this. Yeah. It'd be like another two, four minion with a three, two. So you talked about this deck being board centric early on. In this matchup, damage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you board centric early on, you pump out as much damage as possible, and then you finish off with spells. I'm going to take a, a, a note from your caster, caster notebook, or a leaf from your caster okay, notebook, let's, CJ. Let's go. This deck functions a lot like, like? Mech Mage. No! <laughs> <laughs> you want to build the board early on and finish with spells. That's nothing to you. But you're, ultimately, you're trying to be pretty aggressive. Mm hmm. It's the last thing you wanted to hear, right? Mech Mage? Yeah. But if you think about it, Mech Mage is a lot like Patron Warrior. And Patron Warrior is a lot like Control Warrior. Yes. Yes, it is. 
there's just way too many inside jokes going on anymore. People don't even know how to, how to follow us anymore. Mm -hmm. Even I got lost. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, you left me at the starting line, man. <laughs> <laughs> You've lapped me twice, TJ. Sludge Belcher here can defend you, but how long can that actually hold on? Your opponent has Defender of Argus to follow it up. This deck is has a this specific warlock deck from Oskaka. Mm -hmm. uh, between him, oh. between Oskaka playing it and between Chaki playing it, has a ridiculously high rune rate. It's true. Uh, over the course of those two guys playing, would you play Defender here or Implosion or would you Dark Bomb and flood the board? Well, let's see. You you play Defender. What are you? Are you just sacrificing your? Arcane Golem in, yes. and then spawning an Imp from the from the one two. Yep. If you go for Implosion, and, and you roll low, you're sacrificing you the Arcane sacrifice Golem anyway. Your goal anyway. Yeah, and you're still vulnerable to Hellfire. Yeah. If you go for Dark Bomb and flood the board, you're very vulnerable to Hellfire. Yeah. Not to mention that um, Implosion, if it rolls high, it's still a little awkward. Uh, everything involves. Imp gang boss taking a lot of damage other than Defender of Argus guaranteed. Yep. Now if you're Tom, so this is a cue where awesome you can drop unity. something as a six, like Emperor Thorson or even Sylvanas to control his daily board. Well Tom knows what kind of deck this is. If he plays Emperor Thorson, how much damage is there? There's just six damage on the board. How much damage could he do from hand? He would have to have like three different spells. He would have to have Wow, that is respect. Wow. Yeah, he would have to have like power overwhelming, soul fire, dark bomb, power overwhelming, abusive sergeant, soul fire. Two dark bombs. It's gonna be pretty painful for us guy to get through this though. Well he can if he just rolls normal on an implosion. Three or four. If he rolls two if he rolls two, he is going to be stinging, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Because he has five damage on board. Oh, six damage on board. Excuse me. No, he can guarantee get through this mountain giant through implosion. But it will cost him pretty much everything. Here we go. Three. Three. Okay. So he doesn't have to give up the one one imp. But it's still pretty brutal to have to trade right. into it like that. And then now you play flame it for maximum damage, or you play void walker so that way your sun fury can't get through everything. Now, there's still no Molten Giants for Tom. Kiobot is a great draw. As the game goes on, that's one of the key things you need. Mm, there's no, no easy way to do this. And that's six damage on board. You can't leave that much. Yeah, if you Hellfire, then that's all you're doing. And Hellfire Tap is kind of risky because then you leave yourself at 10 health with nothing on board. Yo, you, uh, he actually dies to a Soul Fire if that's the case. Yeah. Oh my! I think it is. Okay, Shadow Flame is sort of the middle ground here. Yep. Soulfire doesn't kill him. But now it's now Oskaka gets the chance. Whoa. And he has 10 damage from the hand. If he can just Whoa. land this Flame Imp or force like a Hellfire, he wins the game and goes into game number four with the advantage. That's a. So much damage from the hand. It is like Mech Mage. So with a, a card draw mechanic built into the class. Wow. Pretty awesome. That's where Antique Heobot is, is really clutch, though. Yeah. Get you... Oh, man, the second Antique Heobot. Very nasty. But, I mean, there's still plenty of ways for Oskaka to get damage in. Uh, he can tap into Doom Guard and do plenty of things as time goes on. He can even part with the Dark, dark Bomb right now. Oh, both up is nasty. That prevents a lot. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Second anti kill bot though. That's so much heal. But he's starting to build up a board here that's tough to deal with. And uh, eight damage. Eighteen damage. Well, he takes out three. It's gonna tap again. I haven't seen Oskaka hit any Doom Guards. Are there Doom Guards in this deck? Mm, I don't remember if we saw any in Chalkies, and this deck seems to be very similar. I don't remember. I feel, I want to say yes, but I can't say it for sure. With Doom Guard, double Doom Guard and double Soul Fire. I don't know. I feel like that might be inconsistent. I'm, of course, Classic Suzy used to run both of those. 
but it feels like they also had like a much lower curve. Well, if he plays out his hand, he's very susceptible to Hellfire, especially if he ends up trading into this uh, NTQ bot. One of those things there where you might have to consider the pros and cons of each, but you still have a lot of burst in hand. Hit the face. Yeah. I think going on to the Twilight Drake was actually pretty good. Because that means if he Hellfires, then you can trade in like the whatever came out of the Nerubian egg. It's true. And one of the spiders. Or I guess the spiders would get... No, no, because he'd have to kill the Lothib, yeah. He could trade back into it. And he's doing damage to himself with Hellfire as well. Might be time to Hellfire, though. Mm, juggle to the face is not good for Tom. Not to the Drake, either. And he's going to Siphon Soul this 4 force so that way he doesn't lose too much. Oh, he's going to just taunt up instead. Okay, that's fair. My shield for His opponent hasn't had a silence for a long time here. Whoa. One thing to note is that Oskaka has been tapping a lot, and that's a lot has to do with how early he's been able to seize the board, but pretty soon there's going to come a threshold where he can't tap too much, considering mm -hmm. his opponent might just turn the aggression on him. So it's not going to happen this turn. It probably won't happen the next turn, but it's something to keep in mind as the game continues to develop. Hana Creeper doesn't help him too much. Mm, it gives him a minions that Haunted Creeper can get some value. So if you... So say, for example, can he withstand an attack from the opposite end? Because he can play Abuse of Sergeant now, trade it to the wall, and then keep the Haunted Creeper there. If you... Dark Bond, Dark Bond, Soul Fire, 7, 6... Mm, it's still really messy. I think you might have to trade it to the Drake because you're just taking too much damage. But he does end up going for the Ancient Watcher. That's really nice to get, though. The Lothab will shut down so much. Molten Shine and Lothab! I think that's game. Yep. Right there. Locks out spell, sets up lethal for the next turn, and Oskaka had a few windows, but he can never quite find yeah. the oh, right draws. Wait. Hold on. How much damage was that? That was 14 damage from hand. That's crazy. Yeah. 14 damage from hand, not able to be used because of Lilith Deb. And uh, we're going to go to a game number four, and Tom is one win away yeah. from securing his spot at that land finals in Burbank. But this is the uh, this is the importance of um, Oskaka winning that Druid Mirror, because that Druid will have a hard time getting past the, the zoo still. Yeah. And then the Druid has to beat that Patron Warrior. So Oskaka, I still think, on paper, definitely has a really strong chance of taking this back, even though Tom statistically has a, a better chance to win. Yeah. Statistically. Right? Yeah, yeah. Even if he's a slight underdog in both matchups, he has a, a higher chance to win, right? It's like a 60-something percent. If yeah. he has a 40% chance to win both matchups, it's like a 60, low 60% chance to win. Okay. Yeah. So from here, uh, we have that Druid deck with some specific cards. I think he also has Harrison Jones. Oskaka immediately turns to the Warrior to try to shut down this Druid. It's probably the better... Uh, deck equipped to it, even if at its worst, sometimes Druid has that Innervate Keeper mm -hmm. and stops the zoo straight in its tracks. Yeah. Well, Druid is one of those classes that is known to not have terrible matchups against anything. There's always the chance that Druid can get pretty explosive starts with Wild Growth, with Innervate, and close out games. And Tom has two opportunities to be able to do that with Druid. Right. We talked about it earlier. Druid seems to be getting weaker across the board against a lot of matchups. It's just that there's a lot of decks that end up being decent against it because it temp it keeps up with the tempo from Druid and it can outrace them while being able to uh, you know negate a lot of its tempo gain. Like for example, Innervate gets destroyed by Freezing Trap or uh, Swipe, which is normally a great way to seize the board, can't do anything against Grim Patron. So yeah. you know these kinds of examples are why Druid tends to struggle. But that's because and, you know, I'll just go ahead and say it. Druid, people haven't really tried innovating Druid that much outside of a few players like Tide of Time and a few Druid specialists. Yeah. They've been sticking to what they know what makes Druid work versus a, a few people are, only only a few people are really trying to break the class down and trying to find new other ways um, successfully. Because the fact that Grim Patient Warrior does work, but there's a lot of, like, cards from the, the core set 
that people found to be useful, you know, Battle Rage and yeah. all these other things that people weren't using originally. Dan, you're one of the players who no. at least wanted to innervate with Druid. I'm, A direct quote it, from you this morning. I'm going to make a major Domo Druid. <laughs> Two seconds later, I'm not going to make a major <laughs> Domo Druid. Well, the first thing I realized is I had to put Major Dome in my deck. Yeah. And I said, you know what? It's not a good deck. Yeah. Rough life. I do try to make some d fun decks from time to time. Mm -hmm. But uh, whether or not they're successful is for me is for me to know and the rest of the public to, to not. I'm always willing to test them out. And most of the ones they've shown me have been pretty good. Thank you. Despite onto the Pilot Shredder here. Just to kind of control the state of the board. Needs to make sure that the minions don't get out of control. That Echoing Ooze is problematic. So Pilot Shredder number two comes down. So this Grim Patient Warrior from Laskaka is a little bit more combo-oriented, like cycle-oriented. It runs double Azure Drake, double Gnomish Inventor, and Commanding Shout. Uh, so it's, it's more built around um, huge combos as opposed to more built around like a, a board-centric Grim Patient Warrior or a, a lot of waves of smaller combo-centric uh, right. Patient Warrior. And it worked out for him in the game that he won in his la in his semifinal series, where he made a frothing berserker turn, um, where he did over 30 damage in a single turn. So on turn seven. All right, ends up drawing a card just with that acolyte, and didn't want to activate the grim patron. It can get destroyed by a savage roar. The azure drake would also just get eaten up. Uh, and didn't want to part ways with his death, death spite just yet. What why not? You? Why not coin Doctor Boom? Let's see. Is there any significant drawback to that? Turn six, they have like execute with a would be pretty problematic. Yeah, I guess you're right. Because you could attack into the pilot shredder, it would clear off everything, and then you just execute the Doctor Boom. But I mean, I guess that's always going to be a possibility Do that you're. Um, that you're vulnerable to execute. But Despite sort of makes it easier, more obvious of a play. That's so annoying that the Acolyte needs to be swiped because otherwise it draws two cards or it trades well into Pilot Shredder. Yeah. Leaving a damage minion up, it gets not too bad since... Okay, never mind. He hero powered. But as a rule of thumb, leaving a damage minion up against Warrior... Not the yeah, best idea. Big no, no. He can make a lot of patrons. His opponent just used swipe. Doesn't have a whirlwind though. No. But he can make four patrons. Four patrons. With a reduced attack on whatever drops from the pilot shredder, hypothetically speaking. Yeah, but if there's yeah, that's true. There also is the possibility that uh, this ooze could just trade into the grim patron that ends up at one health, which would be the five attack one. Right. Whatever comes out of the pilot shredder could most likely will be able to trade into one of the Grim Patrons as well. So trading into the Echoing Ooze is actually, I think, smarter. Right. Because and then it, he can next... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I like your analysis, man. I think it's really sharp. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. Dr. Boom comes down. And there is Savage Roar Force of Nature next turn with the coin. Wow. Naskaka has to be knowing that. Warsaw Commander comes in the hand with the Frothing Berserker. How much damage? He doesn't have a Whirlwind effect, though, but he could spawn a lot of Grim Patrons. This is a heavy amount of math. This is 11 damage. Dan? Plus the three, two from the Frothing Berserker. Uh, plus the Fire War Axe. So at the baseline, you have 14. Could you? No, sorry. You have 16. And then if you start doing some boom bot math and crazy stuff, you could start... Wild things might happen. Yeah. But this is dangerous. Boombots have been known to be pretty volatile when there's frothing berserkers okay. on the board. It's a dangerous call to make. Yep. Warning. But this is looking grim. Tom, he covers his explode. face. Ah, it's oh. less than three attack. That's good. Hey, Rope is coming. Up. This might be the game on the line because Force of Nature, Savage Roar is in the hand. If he can't clear everything off and find a way to 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 lethal him, then he's got to clear off the Dr. Boom. 
Yeah, he's actually got to go really quick. And he's also has to execute the Dr. Boom because of the combo. And he's going to be going fast for it. Did he hit it with everything? It looks like he got just in time. Wow. And that is 17 damage? Wow, Tom is devastated because he knows how close he was to wrapping up this game despite it being a tough matchup. And it looks like it's out of his hands. He has to combo to clear. <laughs> and we all know what that usually means. Yep. He does address the board pretty effectively, but he's going to be sitting at a pretty low health total with not a lot of resources. Oskaka's got a lot of cycle available in his hand right now with Azure Drake, No Machine Banner. Yes, and uh, I think you can do, go ahead and toss in that Azure Drake. I don't think there's a combination that you can draw that wins you the game. Is there if you Battle Rage? Warsong and Frothing is not. Not with a either. one health Grim Patron. Okay. But you can start equipping the Fire War Axe and chopping. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that is the beginning of the end of this game, or, you know, basically at the end. There's no way for Tom to climb back. Put the patron down. Uh, he can go ahead and play the Sludge Belcher and the Lotheb. Okay, hero power's down. <laughs> He's completely at the mercy of just any damage getting through. Yeah. This is still not over yet. It's true. This is, he doesn't look like he can get through it, at least until he draws a war song. He can attack in here and then use Azure Drake to, and Whirlwind to clear off the slime as well. Mm -hmm. Also to gain him some armor. And cards what? through Battle Rage. And cards through Battle Rage. Oh, he doesn't have enough mana to use all that. But Frothy Berserker fits that bill nicely as well. Two cards is okay. Don't need to get too greedy, I think. Mm -hmm. And just uh, go ahead and kill that Sludge Butcher and armor up. Oh! Wait, hold on. Is there a chance to die? No, 17. Well, he's in. Wait, yes! Yeah, there is! Oh! Wait, no! Force of nature! No way! It's not going to happen, is it? Oh. oh. It's like, after all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, a little scary moment there. Because it would be 17 with the combo with the ooze that mm -hmm. lived, and then innovate hero power for would be 18, 18 would be damage. exact lethal. Right. There's still hope. Now, Tom can swipe this down. Which might have to happen, considering that Father Berserker is getting out of control. But, um... He's at one health! No, it looks like he's basically conceding at this point. Can't really do anything else about it. OBGH? I mean, he ended up drawing with the Ancient of Lord, because that's how desperate he was. Mm -hmm. I've got the beast in my side. But, uh, if his opponent has any weapon whatsoever, this game is over. Really cute plays, but uh, looks like that's going to wrap it up. We're going to game five to wrap this series, and Oskaka will have to take down the Druid with the Zoo. And all of a sudden, the chances for Tom to win has dwindled significantly as we go down to the final game. Yeah, this is one of those matchups where I would not want to be in Tom's position. Uh, your tournament life is on the line, and you have to go up against a, that really fast zoo with a druid. Yep. Uh, you you have to have a really great starting hand as a druid in order to beat this deck. If you get caught with a, a heavy curve in your opening hand, you're screwed. Yeah, it's so easy for the zoo deck to curve well. There's Flame Imps, Void Walkers, Haunted Creepers, Knife Jugglers, uh, Nerubian Eggs, mm -hmm. Abusive Sergeants. There's so many ways for you to make sure you get that turns one or two. And if you're on the coin especially, oh man, if you're on the coin, it's devastating because you get out those two Flame Imps early and then yep. run away with the game. Tom can do it if he gets Innervate Keeper. Wild Growth doesn't even necessarily guarantee success. Only if it's Wild Growth compared, yeah. co uh, compounded by your opponent's slow start. All right, well, here that we go. That is a coin for Oskaka. Will it be Oskaka or will it be Tom? 60229. Yeah. 
joining us at the finals. I don't know. My, my faith is starting to waver a little bit. I'm starting to have doubts. I think I've wandered from the path mm. of the brotherhood. Forgive me, Tom. Do not mean to doubt you. But it's looking like maybe, maybe Le Cota Fromage <laughs> is in a pretty good spot to take this game. Of course, anything can still transpire throughout the course of the game. Uh, tossing back Iron Peak Owl seems to be a pretty strong option, considering that you don't really need it. Uh, he even throws away Imp Gang Boss, because he values the double one drop that much. He gets double one drop. Yeah. He also has a knife juggler, too. But look at that! An Innervate Keeper of the Grove. That is exactly what he wanted. Yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like it might not matter because uh, the abuse sergeant is there. Normally, the keep of the grove can three for one and it buys you enough time yep. to drop something else. Yep, he's going to have innervate keep of the grove, but he doesn't doesn't look like he's going to have a turn three play outside of hero power. Mm -hmm. But the sand isn't the worst for Tommy. Oh my God! That Another is... one drop. That is brutal. And that is Hearthstone in a nutshell. <laughs> Oh, man, and Tom doesn't get a Wrath or some kind of minion to play. He's going to have to hero power this down and fall really far behind. Snares is the worst draw. Wow. <laughs> it's so late. If it gets to turn 9, it's pretty good. It can block some damage, but not even against this Warlock, because a lot of times their lethal opportunities later in the game are just Dark Bomb, Dark Bomb, Soulfire. Yeah. Lotheb is uh, important to shut down, and Tom is devastated. He sees a knife juggler. He knows he has no keeper. He needs a swipe. If he gets a wrath. That is pretty useful. Uh, needs to just shut down the aggression as soon as possible. And a lot can happen uh, if Oskaka whiffs, but so much of the deck is playable. Like yep. even, if his even if Oskaka draws Arcane Gold, I think you just go for it. Yeah. You need to give him six mana. Next turn. Yeah, six mana is not really a power play turn. Uh, that's... He sort of wants okay. to tap here just because he's out of cards, but him getting bossed into low step is... It's fine as long as you're playing on the curve, right? The whole point is that you need to use your mana, and your hero power is there because in the, as the game continues to develop, you don't use your hero power. Right? Ah. That's pretty important. Yes, it is. Tom looks pained by it, though. Because he's worried about power overwhelming, uh, and it's exactly the mana that he has. And, like, Oskak has been holding on to a card for a while, or he has one card remaining, so you're yeah. always like, what one card could I die to? He played both abusives. What? He has to maybe have Power Overwhelming or Soul Fire. And so he's wondering, do I charge this and get the guarantee two for one? But it's almost better to taunt. Or, sorry, it's almost always better to taunt. Oh, my. Defender of Argus actually makes this a pretty interesting turn because now you can make this to six power and you can spawn a one one and you're so that your opponent doesn't have swipe yeah but swipe would still be pretty good to clear the board here whoa guys oh. the body mm-hmm so Tom picks up the swipe, which is huge, because as anything continues to develop, he can be able to take it out. And now he's just hoping that he has enough time, but this gets shut out by Lotheb. Straight up. Lotheb pushed for damage. That's so much damage as well. He's got Dark Bomb. It's yeah. likely that it'll draw to you. I mean, he's got so many ways to sort of finish finish off the game. Arcane Golem, Soul Fire, uh, a second Dark <sighs> he Bomb. He has to do Dr. Boom and kill off this defender. Wow. So he's missing one damage, and Tom realizes that because he didn't swipe, there's a lot of damage that could have been drawn. Haunted Creeper's not it. A tap to win the game. He's waiting, pausing for a dramatic effect because he Whoa. knows that his next card is damage. Nah. Nope. Okay, now, how do you distribute this? Do you just... <sighs> I mean, you're going to play those Haunted Creepers for sure. Do you attack to the boom bots willingly, or do you maximize your damage possible on the off chance that your opponent has the Ancient of Lore? It feels like that uh, Pilot Shredder should go down. There's like no reason to keep that as a 4-1 if it becomes like a 2-3 instead, or a two or less. And then you have, you have to factor in how much damage could Tom do the next turn if he, if he doesn't clear off enough from this board. He's at 25 health with 8 mana. 
Well, he's got Swipe. The Swipe is really clutch, because now he can take care of the Kana Creepers. Drawing that Swipe was really important. He took a pretty big gamble on not playing it. The Boomba hits the face for three. He's not worried unless his opponent has Innervate combo. And they think he might want to take out this Pilot Shredder just for the damage. The Boombot instead, and it hits Lothab for three, which is just middle of the road enough. Innervate Scenarius, is that what yeah. he's thinking about here? Setting yeah. up the defense line as much as possible, but we know what happens. Well, Skaka actually played around like Swipe Savage over there. Swipe Savage would have done exactly 21 damage. I'm not oh, sure if that was intentional, but the way he played it out. Soul Fire. It has to be a Soul Fire here now. Power Wyoming. That doesn't get through. Double oh! Dark Bomb! Oskaka is coming to Burbank. Wow. He is the eighth player to qualify for the Season 2 Finals. And the Double Dark Bomb. A surge of emotion from both players as Tom realizes how close he was. But Oskaka has managed to qualify, and Tom is staying in Taiwan. Oskaka looked slightly emotional there for a second once he realized that that was lethal. And a little heartbreaking for Tom because he played exceptionally well yeah. today. He had two options to go about that turn. He had the Lotheb mm -hmm. or he had the Scenarius. Uh, the Lotheb obviously is just banking on the fact that your opponent doesn't have minion damage. And in the... Or, yeah, in the, in the scenarios, yeah. is banking that doesn't have spell damage. Yeah. And unfortunately, he guessed incorrectly in that scenario. But uh, I, I feel like uh, if this game could have gone to Game 7, it would have gone to Game 7. These guys have played very well today, and they both should be very proud. Yeah, you can take a look at the bracket, the final bracket for today, and the final bracket for the Redemption Series. We started off with a lot of players. Caldy, Tom, Limmy Jux, Too Wet, Oskaka, and Amaz. But at the end of the day, Legato Fromage. Is the, is the winner. And I'm excited um, to see him at the Legendary Series Land Finals. It's a pretty stacked lineup. Yeah. And uh, another way to justify like a, a second place finish from Seat Story Cup, not a fluke at all. And when we throw out like praise for Oskaka, both from his former teammates, I know 6 0 used to be on route with Oskaka, talks great about him all the time. Um, you know, the fact that there's stats like the fact that he's like one of the best ladder players in the world. Uh, that he's always doing really well in qualifiers. Finally being able to get a chance to come here to California with his expenses paid from Sweden. A great story for uh, our Swedish player here. Yeah, so uh, we can go over the, the eight players that we've had qualified for the land so far. Uh, Kalento, Life Coach, Kabi, Reynad, Trump, Lead Paint, Spider Roger, and Oskaka. Yep, those are our eight players who qualified but are getting an invite based off the qualification process. We also have uh, eight players who will be qualifying next week as well. Uh, now going to be rounding our 16 players coming up for the land. All right. Well, we do have an interview ready with our winner, Oskaka. Let's head over to that. Hey, Oskaka, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hey, first off, a big congratulations. And uh, you looked a little bit emotional at the end of that last match. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I mean, I rarely get emotional, but... That last game was just like, I had a really aggressive start, so I thought I had it at the start, and then, you know, I didn't draw like the one damage I needed, and then I do the Dark Bomb at the end. I had like two Soul Fires and a Dark Bomb left. It was like my only outs, I think. Yeah, yeah so, uh, uh, well, I mean, if you tapped into like an Owl, I guess, or, uh, yeah, yeah, you would have been able to get that too. But that's like very few outs. Enough. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us like the um, the origins of that warlock deck? Because we've seen it a, cu a couple times. It's like a zoo with lots of burn spells. Oh, where'd you get that from? Uh, it's actually from Impacts. It's a he's a guy who helped me with more than one deck in this tournament. Uh, I think also Chucky played it. Um, but he, yeah, it's from Impacts. He's a really good deck builder and helped me a lot for this tournament. That's right. Impact is really underrated by a lot of the community. I don't really know too much about him, but you know, props to you for being able to pilot and navigate. Uh, you know, how, how is everything currently um, for you specifically? I know you came off a really good performance for Seat Story Cup 3, and then since then it seems like you've still been relatively quiet. What have you been up to since then? Uh, well, usually you become a little bit quiet if you don't stream, so I guess that's mostly it, but I will be playing in uh, some upcoming team leagues with pretty big prize pools, so I can't say I'm sad about it. And also I'll be playing at DreamX Summer, uh, but yeah, I've still been playing a lot, you know, practicing, laddering. 
right. Are there any players that you're specifically looking forward to playing against uh, in the land finals? Uh, do you know all the players that are participating? Mm, I think so, yeah. It's really stacked, right? Like, yeah. Lots of invited players who qualified, so uh, I know most of them, I think, maybe even all of them. So, yeah, it'll be nice to see them again. Alrighty, well, thank you very much. A big congratulations. Are there any shout-outs you want to give to your fans or uh, your team or sponsors? Uh, shout to my practice group. I can't name all of them, but, you know, uh, they know who they are. Uh, helped me a lot for this tournament, and at least one of us made it through the qualifiers. You know, Chucky, Luffy, uh, and Modern Leper as well attempted but didn't make it, so uh, I'm glad I could. All right. And shout-out to my team as well, Root Gaming. Root. Nice. Good team shout root out for to you. Root for Root. Root for Root. Indeed. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah. Thanks. thanks. All right. So, looks like Oskaka continues the, the war path. A lot of people were happy to see him succeed uh, in his former tournaments. And another player who came through the open, who's also been deserving of breaking out for a while. I think Oskaka's. Uh, if I, I want to talk about some of the best players that people don't really know too much about, this guy is one of them. He's definitely in the group. Yeah. Uh, some of the people he practices with, with are also in the same thing, mm -hmm. too, as well. You know, Impact, for example. Uh, I think he's also up there. I think, um, you know, Iskaka comes in here, and it'd be one of the things where if he does really well at the land, people should not be surprised at all. Just watch the way he played at Seed Story Cup and the way he's able to, you know, go through all these qualifiers. And he even says, though, he's not really that emotional of a person. It's true. I've met him, like, five, six times by now, and he's always really calm and collected. Yeah, but you know, being able to see him be happy in that moment when he realized like all of the the effort to qualify has been worth it for him on top of a little bit of money. So congratulations. Yeah, and to talk a little bit more about that land finals, it will happen June fifth through seventh, so a couple weeks now. That's right. And uh, we're getting ever closer to it. We will be selling tickets shortly, so you can um, make sure you head on over to the website. I'm sure we'll have information there soon within the next couple of days, I believe. So that's legendaryseries.com, of course. Uh, we also want to give a big shout-out to our sponsors who are going to make all the awesome things we're going to be able to do at the LAN Finals possible. Yep. Plantronics and Gigabyte G1. I'm really looking forward uh, to meeting all the players. The 16-8 who we haven't even decided yet, and it wouldn't be possible without those guys. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's been a really fun journey so far in Season 2 with these uh, sponsors. So thank you so much, Plantronics, Gigabyte. Uh, and also thank you to everybody who's been watching as well. Uh, let us know what you guys thought about how today went the social media on by hashtagging HLS and tweeting at ESL Hearthstone. Uh, tweet at ZumoCutie, tweet at Frodan, let us know how we did as well. We're done with the week of broadcast, and that means we're not going to be live until our next finals, right? That's going to be yeah. the, the next time we go live? The finals will be the next time that we go live here. But it's not the last time that this tournament does something. In fact, next week we also have the last call qualifier, TJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last chance qualifier. Uh, it's only open to North American players since it's a week before the land finals uh, due to flight and visa restrictions. Anybody outside of North America would have too tough of a time uh, getting all that prepped and ready to get to the land. So if you're in North America, if you want your shot at competing at the Legendary Series land finals, make sure you head to legendaryseries.com. Uh, you can head and look at the last chance open. Yeah, 128 uh, the, players, I think. 128 players so will be capped competitive. at. competitive. Yeah, yeah it'll, it, the actual opening for signups uh, will come later in the week, and there will be a public announcement on our Twitter and uh, and on the website. So make sure you're keeping up with that if you want to participate. But I think that's going to do it from us. Dan, yeah. it's been a long week, but it's been a fun week. We made any, it, TJ. you have any closing thoughts? Through all the fanfic stories to all of our theory crafting about what would be good with mm -hmm. dragons to talking about European culture, it's been a blast, TJ. Uh, I won't be casting with you at the land finals. I'll be hosting that's... and uh, doing more of the interviews and the, the ceremony stuff. So I hope uh, whoever comes cast with you, you'll have fun without me. Yeah, it should be Try fun. To make it I look forward to, to seeing you host, though. It's, it's always <laughs> And it's always a pleasure to work yeah. with you as well. But, Thanks, man. Uh, once again, a big congratulations to all the players that qualified through the Redemption Tournament. And uh, for myself, from Frodan, from everybody here, the entire production crew at ESL, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you at the land.